Volume 5, Bible Story, Volume 5. And we now are Part 2, Story 9, Making Iron Float. I mean, iron is a heavy thing. Um, I don't have, I used to have, well, a steel, I have some steel wedding bands in the other room. And they don't float. And iron and steel are basically the same element. But let's dig let me digress and go get back to digress. Let me stop uh, rambling and just get back to our story. Okay, part two, story nine, making iron float. <clears throat> Many were the miracles God wrought through his faithful servant, Elisha. Perhaps it was because the times were so dark and his people were so poor and needy that he revealed his power to so, in so many wonderful ways. One was Elisha was visiting, visiting a school of the prophet in Gilgal. He found that the students were had very little to eat. Seeing, hung, seeing how hungry the young men were, he said, set on a great pot, and everybody began to look for for a good meal. While the food was cooking, one of the students anxiously wanted to help, brought a heap of wild gourds and shredded them into the pot, knowing, not knowing that they were poisoned. Meanwhile, meal time came. The young men sat around licking their lips. With Elisha in charge, he knew they knew they would would fare well. Eagerly they watched as the food was poured from the pot. Then came the bitter disappointment. Somebody realized the taste of the wild, taste of the wild gourds. Don't eat, he cried. There is death in the pot. Poor hungry student. All looked at Elisha, shocked that he would have let them down like this. He didn't, nor was he upset. Bring me meal, he said, and they brought him, and they brought some. Then he cast it into the pot. Now start pouring again, he said. They did, and lo, the bitter taste had gone, and the poison had vanished. Another time, when he was meeting with a group of people, about a hundred altogether, somebody bought twenty barley loaves and some ears of grain in a sack. So twenty barley loaves and a grain of set and ear some ears of grain in a sack. And this is him healing the pot of wild gourds. Yeah, you gotta be careful what you eat. And the like you said, the guy didn't know. Okay, and let's get back to the story. Give them to the people that they may eat, he said. What should I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked. Yes, said Elisha. Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, they shall eat and shall leave thereof. It was just like the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, which Jesus brought more than 800 years later. Which Jesus brought more than 800 years later. <coughs> there was plenty of for everyone and lots left over. 
One day the leader of one of the schools of the prophets came to Elijah and reported that their building was overcrowded. There was no room for all the young people who wanted to attend. So would it be all right to put up a new building? They had to cut the trees and do the rest of the work themselves to keep expenses down. Elijah said the plan sound good to him and he wished them well. Come with us, they uh, urged, and anxiously for his good advice. I will go, he said, and went with them. Arriving at the Jordan, they all began cutting down trees along the riverbank. Suddenly there was a cry of alarm. My axe, cried one of the students. The head has fallen off into the water. At last, master, for it was borrowed. Where did it fall, said Elisha. Over there, said the young man, pointing to a place where it had disappeared. Elijah cut a stick and threw it towards the spot, while everybody looked to see what would happen. Suddenly the axe head floated to the surface as though it was made of wood. Pick it up, said Elisha, and he walked away. The boy did so. His heart burst with gratitude to his master and his God. Of course, it's a copy of, the, of what's on the front. And here's a picture of him telling to feed the bread to everybody. Right here at the top. And then at the bottom, it's the same that's in inside. The axe head floated. Okay. And that's the end of part two, story nine. So we're going to stop, take my break, and then we'll do the next one. And this apparently is a short one. See you in a minute.